Hi everybody, I've got a new stream series for you. This time I'm showing my approach to creating a stylized plane in Modo, Substance Painter and Designer. For those of you who don't know me, I'm John, aka Graffiti, and I'm an environment artist with experience in both the animated film and games industries. As always, these videos are recorded live streams, and therefore there's no music, and each video is quite lengthy. So you might want to increase the speed of the video and put your own music on in the background. If you want to see me make stuff live, then please tune into my Twitch channel, and you can follow me on Twitter for updates. If you have any questions about my process, then please comment below and subscribe for new videos in the future. Enjoy. Okay, dokie. So, got to this, was it this, last time? And we're just going to continue. But first, you know, like with all the other streams, we're going to have a look at this against the original concept and just see how it's shaping up. Let's turn this down a little bit. Um, cool. Okay, so in fact, it's probably better on the other side. Yeah, so, crop. And let's go in, let's have a look. So, basically, we've added in a bit of, a bit more detail as we've gone along. We've refined the shape a bit more. Um, if I open up where we, where we got to, what was the feedback last time? So, what did we say? Made the, the fins thicker, we adjusted the, uh, what do you call it, the wings, just refined things a bit more, did more pipe work, realigned these, brought the thing in. We need to work out what's going on the other side. So let's get some notes going. Maybe we'll screw up still. That seems to be alright, I had issues last time. So. And that kind of ties in down here as well, and that is detail. detail. Um, this is just to match, so we've got kind of this lovely stuff on this side. I don't want it to be uh, the same on the other side. Hi Curious, how are you? Long time no see. Um, we still need to work out what the hell is going on in here. Um, whoa. What's happening here? Um, maybe some kind of um, basic rig. going on with the wings and with the wheels and such um, but that's I mean we're sort of apart from just you know detailing it out a bit I think the block outs working matches the concept a lot more um, yeah I think you know we're more or less in the right place and you know we can probably start um, refining the um, the shapes, uh, you know, we'll start with the retopology re today. I think the main things we need to do is yes, this detail on the other side, and also the um, what's happening inside here because we probably can get away with it. But we had a look at a couple of streams back of how it would sit on the ground, um, and 
and that isn't really explained in in the image so that's why it'll be worth having a look at what's in there maybe even changing it up slightly so that it works a bit better and then the reason why i'm saying a basic locator rig is just so that instead of moving the geometry we're moving the locator uh, which will help when it comes to uh, you know just checking that everything works as it should do um, in fact i would say that probably the wings need to be moved to the center a bit more from this side view which would help I think with balance more than anything Um, yeah, can anyone else see anything? Um, and you know, all this extra detail in here will happen when we come around to actually putting in the, the retopology topology. Um, we're just literally refining the shapes here. I think maybe one thing would be right here. That could be a bit more exaggerated. And then perhaps even, maybe not that high, but. Just bring it up slightly. Raise slightly. Because admittedly the characters are not really the same shape. I mean, look at the size of this guy's face compared to the rest of his body. Um, but we've got, I put the guy in there anyway, you know, just to help me. Uh, also, while we're here, is cockpit. Oh, smell wrong. Interior. Detail. So, really, a lot of. By detail, I'm just saying block out detail, nothing you know, more than that, because it doesn't need anything more than that right now. Cool, save this. Uh, three, what do I save these as? So, G. G! Okay. Cool. Uh, so, let's minimise that. So, here we are. A lovely camera view, which we're going to which we don't need right now, actually. So let's just deposit that over here. Okay, so these wings, first of all, can be brought forward. Like so. And actually, while we're here, yeah, there is quite a substantial gap. Brought up and still you know, quite tucked in. So, something like that, maybe. Seems alright. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, what was that? So, we've done that bit. What's happening here, basically, yeah, so we'll bring this bit up as well at the back. And we will, is this, no, so let's mirror that. And do a duke, an instance mirror, sorry. Pi. So now it will get worked up together. I need my ref up. There we 
go. So we can look at this properly. So maybe it needs to come back out more. Hello, uh, boot camp was cancelled today, so instead I did some overtime because we got a game to finish. Oh god, I have to be using Maya all day. I'm forgetting how to use Modo. Okay. And yeah, maybe we'll just be a bit more aware of what's going on up here when the read topology happens. nice with no clutter just feel like things are a little off on the keyboard and you know not everything's in the right place uh, right so in here we want to just pull this top bit up slightly and we'll save the new version is also at the top here a little more elongated Quite subtle changes, really, but will probably help the overall shape and silhouette. Basically, I'm kind of trying to put in things as well that I don't want to forget about when we do the retopology. So now, done, raise that, we've moved the wings, we need to do detail on the other side, detail underneath, and detail in the interior. <sighs> Maya, oh, don't even get me started, it's just, oh, it 
like even when it kind of locks itself into some modes like I was selecting edges today and it was just like yeah so I want to collect on another object but you want to stay in edges but I don't want to stay in edges so what and also when you click on you think you're clicking on an edge and it doesn't select it doesn't highlight it it's just clicking an edge on the other side of the mesh and you just and there's no indicator whereas at least with this you can kind of go uh, oh do you want to select this edge you know we're highlighting it to show it to you that this is the edge that you're selecting yes god intuition just bam Moto's got it anyway enough of that um, Right, we need some something on the other side here. What I might do actually is mirror these across in a very first instance. And we'll put them on their own layer. Procedural meshes cannot be ah oh, okay, so you guys, okay, okay, so they are there, but, so who are you then, ah, oh, that's a curve, okay, so let's select these guys, copy them, paste them, How's the tank coming along? Uh, hard man ink. I realised from last week that I've been saying the wrong name all this time. And hoping no one would notice. But then, I, then Storm called me out. Bastard. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I've been just thinking. So that maybe this bit needs to be a bit uh, more exaggerated. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't feel that this sits in the best position.
go in there at. And then we just need to adjust the curve. Green watermelon, how are you? Uh, this is why I cannot wait to be done with this tank in May, so I can just focus on Modo. I don't mind calling me Wotho. I just put up a pick in Discord if you want to see what you think. Yes, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? How are things in Ireland? Uh, uni going okay? Coming to final project time, that kind of thing. To look at some reference for the other side detail and also not quite happy with this pipe in all honesty so I think what it needs is to come in slightly Things are alright. I have a ton of academic writing to catch up on. <laughs> well, I seem to quite like Modo. It's a bit of an understatement. I do love it. I think it's the best 3D mod modeling package out there, in my opinion. Uh, hey Leon, how you doing? Um, yeah. fall in there. So actually this should you know would be better if it's curved, I would have thought. it needs to be worked up a bit kind of covered a bit more uh, so actually what I could do here is intersect it with another mesh because that will keep it a lot cleaner and written work is you know never fun watermelon um, 
<laughs> Although it's kind of weird. Uh, I find it's much easier to do once you leave uni um, when you actually write for yourself. So I'm writing a you know a little uh, what went post mortem on the last uh, project I made, and yeah, I happily wrote a thousand words on it. <laughs> Right, so this needs subdivisions. So let's move these down. So my help here is if the curve, if the geometry curves with the geometry inside, just to help it out a touch. And then this just needs to poke inside the other mesh. Apart from the dude's legs, we now have a bit of a seal in there, so we won't get any light going through, all that kind of thing. What separates it from Max, Meyer, etc.? So ZBrush is streaming an event. I think actual work and union work are very different. Um, I don't know, are, are ZBrush streaming? Uh, normally I host Pixelogic stuff, but obviously I'm streaming, so it won't be hosting, this, hosting them. Um, what separates it from Max and Maya? I think it for me the modeling the modeling is very intuitive. Intuitive. It's um, it's kind of like nothing's buried in menus. There's these tabs at the side which um, contain all the tools you need. Um, everything can be placed onto uh, this thing the the item list so you can kind of it allows you to work independently from other items um yeah i, I think it's for more than anything i'm probably used to it um and it's kind of one of those things that once you get used to something you don't really let it go um uh, watermelon. Uh, I did do a quick start uh, in Modo. If you ever want to, you know, learn it for yourself, which I am going to edit tomorrow, people. I'm editing tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping to get things up, um, you know, in the next week or so, just because it's Easter, so I've got some time off. Um, I just need to do all my cheats, sheets, uh, put my PDFs together, and get these edits sorted. So, um, I like how it works in Quas so easily. Yeah, so it works in Ngons really easily, which is fantastic. Um, the rendering, you know, it, like, let's have a, let's just render this now. Boom, done. The default lighting's great. Um, we don't have to do anything special to set any materials up. It just kind of goes, hey, you want to re render something? Cool, let's do that. And it's and it does it. That's why I love it so much, uh, because it's all accessible straight out of the box. Um, 
And you're going to stick with Max for now because the people around me use that. It's easy to hit. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's it. I mean, I when I learned Modo, our whole studio was learning it, and that was my previous job at the, at the same time. So it was very easy to go back and forth. And whenever we had work experience people in, it was I, I said, well, you're going to have to learn how to use Modo. Uh, otherwise, I can't help you because I've never used Maya or Max before. Um, and it's amazing how many people learned it in the in the in the time period and then loved it and then was just like oh I don't really want to go back now, uh, but yeah it is easier. Excuse me, with help on hand, uh, definitely agree with that. Right, okay, so I want to look at some plain detail. So let's go with World War Two. Plain detail. Let's just see what comes up. Uh, now, unfortunately, they're all very aerodynamic, which is great for getting something to fly, but in our case, it's got exposed pipework. So, let's go with pipes. Let's see what comes up. So, we've got exhausts some mechanical bits and it could be that we just leave it what about steampunk uh plane let's see what comes up so maybe not plane Big detail. Yeah, maybe plain. That's pretty cool. So it's got exhausts. So maybe we could have a step on the other side. Because you could step on the pipe, but equally we could have a step on the other side. Uh, we've got some bolts and just kind of, so maybe just sealed bolts slash plugs. So in a similar position to you know, the bits on here, maybe they're just sealed holes instead, like on here. Um, um, a ladder, rivets, yeah, I mean, it's already got rivets on this thing, so that's, you know, I'm just going for things that are, are not. And the other thing is kind of like a ladder on this image, it looks like you just hop into it. So I think it's like thinking about things that fit more with it rather than just tacking anything onto it. So like, for example, this thing here, uh, this red baron has got... Um, you know, these vents, it's got machine guns, it's got all this pipe in, it's got the, the turbine under the ship, it's got a target reticule, whereas in the image, like that kind of stuff wouldn't fit in with the reference because it's this steampunk plane is like a fighter plane, whereas what I'm what what's here is probably a fighter plane, but um, maybe it's more of a well probably like some kind of tugboat thing. And if it has got, you know, guns, where are they? It's kind of, maybe they're in these little headlight things. So it's kind of keep, like keeping things synced together. Um, that's pretty cool. Maybe I've just got some some yeah, some just more abstract piping. Um, K 
kept busy with the little one at the moment, but no sis you streaming, so just drop in and say, Oh, thanks, Rusty. I mean, appreciate that you're stopping by and stuff. Um, hey, what's the mech? How you doing? Um, get in there, Rusty. Get in there. Done some uh, uh, some tiny tweaks, probably barely even noticeable, to be honest. But yeah, plunging into getting kind of the rig working in here, uh, getting the wheels sorted, and just adding some detail over here. Uh, in fact, let's just start meshing stuff in. So, step. stepping onto it you want to step forward yeah and then sling your foot over so it's not going to be yeah yeah okay that's that makes sense because it, it's you know it's fine add in detail, but it can break the illusion of what you're trying to create if it doesn't fit completely with what you're doing. Um, so like when I was at Bournemouth, it was uh, um, not in my year, but in another year before me, um, one of the lecturers was saying that this guy was making some kind of robot and um, he wanted it as a uh, firefighting, like Gundam Wing type mecha thing, um, and then he just put a gun on it, and it was just like, yeah, but why would a firefighting robot need a gun? Surely, if anything, it would need some kind of water dispenser. And it's kind of like by thinking, kind of well, more about what you're, what you're creating, what's what's it about? And this goes for you know like uh, environment set dressing and stuff like that. Um, just helps ground what you're creating a lot more. think of a racer plane. Oh, I suppose so, yeah. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It's a racer plane. Kind of a bit of a weird racing plane. <laughs> Let's have a look at racer planes as well then. I could imagine there's a lot of just exhaust action. I think you watch too much Transformers. Maybe you just want this great an automat. Yeah, maybe. But then I think by kind of starting out and saying, I want to make a firefighting robot, and then just kind of get bored with it and th like shoehorn something else into it, it's kind of, I think that's what it stems from. When you get bored of something, you start finding other things or you, you're kind of inspired by other things and then you try and merge the ideas together and sometimes they don't really work. Um, We've all been there, I suppose. Because, you know, getting bored of a project happens more often than you probably think. Uh, what I am going to do here, actually, is just...
cool. All right, and then back over here, back to the reference. They have the Red Bull Air Race, which has plenty of star could support the concept. Gonna have to Google this instead. Uh, Red Bull Air Race. Yeah, I think we're gonna run into the same kind of thing where you know these planes are built for speed and you know aerodynamics and stuff, so they're unlikely to have um, things sticking out on the side. on it. That's pretty cool. Maybe it's got some just patchwork. So this has got kind of, um, you know, extrusions and things. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Those sealed thing just didn't waste, so let's grab loop. Oh, needs that. Pull these in. Maybe it's just flusher. When we come to do it, maybe it's like inset. That might be quite cool. Um, one of the other design variants had. Oh, we push this in. And then we. Move this over here. Move this over here. I got a bar in it, which I thought was pretty cool. So maybe just something that we put in later. Don't know. Let's just don't want to forget the idea. Almost like that you could turn it and put slot something else in there if you wanted, so you could have this on the other side, which would be pretty cool. Might just mirror that over. So, hello, artistic license. We can have things that clip on to other things, which would be. 
which would be pretty cool. Panels there. And maybe it's worth, you know, if we had these on other things, I suppose that we can paste this. Move this down here. Because, you know, we're detailing the the plane, but it's not going to be that much work, which, you know, at the end of the day, saves us time, will save you time. So you're kind of just indicating something, sometimes it's better to hint at something than to, you know, outrightly say, hey, look, you can, here's some detail here of something that you could do, yeah. You know, maybe this this one's got a different cap to it. Maybe it comes out like so, just to mix it up. Maybe it's smaller as well. You know, just to mix things up a bit. Obviously, we need to keep it in line on both sides. So it's kind of, you might say, actually, uh, perhaps these planes can be, you know, set up so that they could be flown. I say left or right-handed. There's still probably one joystick or one thing, but you could put the handbrake on with your left or right hand. Thinking of 1930s racer. Ooh, hello. It's a beast, isn't it? Maybe we just have extra panel detail. Maybe one of the panels is a different colour to the other panels, like a patch job, or it's a similar colour, but because it's a newer part, it's not been as you know um, in the sunlight as long. That kind of thing. That and that again might save us time. Um, Not as sun bleached. Um, Akijara. Is that someone new who's come in? Say hello. Um, yeah, right, so. If we have, so it's got a big plate at the back, so maybe one of these. Basically, if we have one of the plates on the back, maybe even, you know, the back bottom bit down here, you know, under, so it would be essentially round here, replaced, then that will give enough detail on here to make it as though they're 
it's not lacking in any detail, if, it, if that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, you know what? I am happy with that. Um, so, the next thing we're doing is looking at how the wheels work and that kind of thing. <clears throat> Ooh, right. Okay, so let's find where these were again. So it's not that one. It's not that one. Let's delete them. Wing flight we're not having anymore because we moved it to this position. So there's a back wheel that we put on. So we need to, a space for that to go or just have it out probably for it to, you know, recline back into. So we'll need a slot for this to come out of and live in as well. It's not the end of the world. And we'll also need uh, it to somehow fold out of. strong enough to to hold uh, so it's coming out so maybe it's just around one big pivot pushing on it, that would probably make more sense. Just left hanging out, I suppose. Damn you, pure earth. This can be, you know, worked out later in terms of detail. Let's just get a square in place so that we can see where it might possibly go into.
so it's going to look a bit weird, but the idea is that we've got a reminder to cut into there. Right, okay, so that's the back wheel. Uh... Oh, excuse me. I think I'm all tired because I haven't done exercise. Let's make this metal grey. Time we're on half eight. Okay, so ideally, another hour doing block out stuff and then we can start on the retopology. Should be pretty awesome. Uh, right, okay, so first off, I need to find those other wheels. Wheel, uh, wings folded. Okay. So here's where the ribbon is going to begin. And these can only be moved in item mode. Oops. I want to duplicate this locator and move it and if we get our folded wing up we can kind of see where the split is so it's on the other side of here No idea what that is. <laughs> okay. Could put this in the middle as well. And now on the mesh. up, which is what we want. Okay, guessing somewhere. Wing end and wing A. 
place. How's uh, everyone's? Is everyone doing some work or is uh, are we chilling out? I know Rusty's being uh, occupied. <laughs> And you know, it's it's not a problem that we've all we've modeled. That, you know, we're cutting this off out, uh, on axes and stuff because we're still blocking it out. I think what we'll do is when we come to we need to apologize this, we'll move it all to zero zero zero. Do the whole um, you know three uh, D mesh and then move it into position um, with the rig in mind, knowing that it works. Okay, so I'm going to key in, if I get some time. Layout, windows, new window, data list. Uh, data lists. Okay, the reason why I just got this is so I can actually key in um, the positions. So at zero, we'll have it in its flying position. So I want to key all of these. So that we know that we can scrub back to here and it'll be fine. And then let's go to 60. And let's move things. So we need this to be rotated. XJ Crawler, thank you for the follow. Feel free to say hi in chat or what have you. Hope you're you know finding this kind of interesting. Really appreciate it. seems okay and then we'll just round these up or down because it will be far easier in the future okay so that's all keyed in there and then this one needs to bring this up So now we can scrub the timeline and it moves into position, which is exactly what we want. So if we fold, where are you? Things folded, turn that off. Um, Now I want to. Shit. How can I change the graph? Linear. Go to animate. Can we change 
change the actual graph. Uh, actually, before that, let's go to layout. New data list. Graph editor. Although we need the actual layout. Uh, yes, there we go. So these we can set to this, these we can set to this. Here we do the same thing. And now we can scrub the timeline and it snaps into position. So we can quickly go between states and see what it looks like. And you know, all of that without having to know anything about animation. Win it. Boom. Just need to wing on the other side. Hi, Crawler. How are you? What brings you here? How did you find me? Etc. Always good to know. Uh, work it, work it, work it. Oh, sorry, Autobac, I forgot you're actually at work. Um, <laughs> Okay, so now will it let me actually duplicate this stuff? Ah, before that. I want to get another null or locator put this at the base. Maybe put it upstairs a little bit so it's out of way. And essentially this is the root just about organization and renaming stuff so that later on you're not all confused. And parenting in place is not supported for animated elements and imperative elements will not be formed. Right, so I need to kill my animation bugger. Right, I knew there'd be a problem. We duplicate this and remove uh, move key, remove key, and then come on to this one and remove the keys there. We should have done it the other way around. Okay, so we need to come to 60 first. And then come to zero and remove the keys. Okay, and then we place that inside. Yeah, and then we key all of this again. Key, key, key. Uh, and then key this one as well. There's probably an easier way to copy and paste animation, but I don't know what that is. Okay, so now this, we just copy and paste. Uh, I'm guessing it has 
hasn't changed, let's just change that to 80. Okay, and then this. And it's still at 9. Oh, shit. Is that right? Sorry, no, it's this, it's this one. I was going to say, it's way off. Just snap it onto what we have down here. And that's all keyed, that's fine. Then when we move this back, it's in the position it should be. Great, yeah, so bit of a, a, a balls up there on my end, but not the end of the world. So let's hide all that. And then we just need to get our graph editor again, which is back here somewhere. I don't really need the timeline open if I've got this. Uh, so making that. Excellent. Because the wings changed in size, it might not need to have to go back so far when it's at 60. keys as well. Brilliant. Now, what if we duplicate this and we invert everything? I don't think it's going to allow us to do it if I'm honest. Duplicate mirror. Save this. something offset it what if we just duplicate the root and then scale that to minus 100. And it works. But does it render? Boom, does, excellent. Pop it back, works. That's why I love Modo. There's no fapping about, there's no float polygons, there's no it works in here, but it might not work anywhere else. Cool. That's great. Okay, so. 
It's matched up to the position that we set in our original wing piece, which is excellent. So now we need to think about how the wheels might work around this. So uh, wheels, wherever they may be. So the ground we don't need. Is that just an old wing? I think it is. Might just do a bit of uh, housekeeping in here. Pipes all. Some more pipes over there on the other side here. block out, you know, refined over time. Wheels. There we go. It's actually labelled wheels. Uh, I think there's an instance to go with it. And we've got these claw things, which, uh, looking at the image, they do look like they curl in slightly. Right, so that's the landing pose, but the wings have got to fold into that when it's coming down. So when it first hits the ground, it looks like those are going to, oh god, it's very close. It looks a little bit too close, if I'm honest. There's a gap, the smallest gap ever, so if anything, the wheels need to come down. Oh, you can see it better here in the orthographic. The wheels need to come down further. And admittedly, the wings probably move up slightly to act more as a, a kind of break. Still though, this is fine. the wings kind of lock further back. Now obviously this bit as well we don't necessarily have to do but it would be good to make it look as though it actually works all together than it to kind of I think if you don't kind of plan things out it, it kind of tends to 
like sometimes you can tell that something doesn't work. Okay, so that's them out fully. So let's do a version with them um, closed. wings around this go from there to there so perhaps they pinch in and then come out so we might need an additional key but that's fine we can do that Let's run with that for the moment. Let's just get get some nulls in. And I want this to be in line with the other null we have. Which to be honest I should have rounded out. So you make an array or just animating it. So I'm kind of I'm kind of doing like a primitive rig. So something that you could do with your tank. So you just attach a couple of nulls to it, separate some meshes out, but it means that your model stays at zero 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 when you're modeling it, which helps keep things aligned and easier to work with. But then to see that things are, you know, working in place and they're, you know, for you it would be like testing out uh, a thing is intersecting if the turret's rotating or that kind of thing. You do a rigged version so that you can move it without it, you know, selecting all the vertices each time. Um, I think it's, uh, I mean, like I've been saying, it's not a completely necessary step, but because it's... Um, it just because it makes things a lot easier uh, well you know with moving parts so for me I do want to check that whatever's happening on inside here looks like it would work in real life um, it can be quite uh, a useful tool Move that to the center of there. 
Okay, so we've got wheel rot. And then let's key that and key those positions and then grab this and put it inside. That's at zero in its flight position, with the wings in their flight position too. And then we need to move it on 60 into the other position. So let's move things around. Something like that, maybe. It's similar, it's not. Hang on, though. Get this to. something like that. Oh, and then we it's already keyed, so that's good. So in fact, let's just minus 69 minus 3 minus, oh no, not minus 140. Actually, just round these off a bit more. So that's better. Cool. Uh, so now I need my graph editor again. And then we want to select everything, set it to this. So now again, it snaps. Hopefully, is it doing it? Yes, because that's an old wheel. Into its fly position. It's not flight position, which is what we want, and then we can get rid of whatever this one is down here. And again, duplicate this to a minus 100. And we've got the other one. Again, housekeeping and give these a color. And there we go, and actually, might want to turn locators off when modeling. So what we could do is on both of these, on all of these nulls, we could keep them uh, as flowing, uh, as you know, gradient um, animated curves, so that if we now select all these. Do it. Might have to do it 
individually. Jeez, that was the wrong thing I was selecting. Just like the actual things with the animation on them in order to get them. That makes a lot more sense. So if we make these flow again, we can see when we scrub the timeline where they're going. So in fact, yes, we need some additional keys for the um, Definitely the the wheels because they come out at this weird angle, which isn't going to help our cause. They want to come straight down and then lock in to those positions. So let's do that first. We can do that by can we just move these? There we go. And then if we go back to the beginning, key these again, and then line those out, come back to these ones, which was at 42, and move them. position so that kind of helps us a bit more with you know visualizing the space where are they coming from where are they going and in fact I just might move these to 50 So what's going on in here then? So these just come away. Actually, what we need to do as well is on the wings these back to this. So what's nice is that the hinge for the wheels stays in one place. We only have to really worry about is where the wings go. And even then, we don't have to worry so much. In in fact, we can depend on where the the the, the the wheels are. We can determine the resting sat position for the plane, which will be out of each other's way. Um, he says anyway, so let's have a crack at this. Okay, so this is all rigged up and the actual frame, we're not gonna bother with doing you know, anything too tricky because it doesn't need it. 
uh, might just hide locators from these so that we don't click on them accidentally. central column thing, which would be pretty cool. And I'm going to instance this. Bit of rigging on the on a mech and a character. I was going to rig my tank, so I have done most of it. Just not put controls in, and since it's just I wasn't going to. Hi Sasha, how you doing? Long time no see. Um, yeah, I, I mean I get what you're saying. Um, it is. I mean right now this is a lot of faff for probably. Um, you know we don't really need to think about it, but. The reason I'm doing it is so that I can have shots of this where it's not just in the sky. We can have it landed, we can do some moody shots, that kind of thing. I was having to think about style as well today, actually, because I know I said that um, this might be quite good if it was, you know, a realistic style. But I might, you know, we'll see how it pans out, but maybe something like with a PBR Ratchet and, Ratchet and Clank look might look quite cool. So it's kind of cartoony, in keeping with the style of this a bit more of the concept, but um, you know, uh, you know, brighter colours. But then having this, uh, yeah, PBR aesthetic. So things metal still look like metals, etc., etc. remix of it. Great. Let's remove some of them. Well, I mean, <laughs> who knows? I keep changing my mind. And I think, if anything, we need to do some tests on it and just see what looks cool. 
because uh, at the end of the day, I, I wanted to look cool uh, more than anything else. It's a bit of a cover. So they're basically protected during flight. Into. Uh, now this is interesting. So when they're folding in, they catch on the back of here. So I need to bring these forward. So in flight mode. Not that one. These ones. So now it's like it's already beginning to feel like there's something going on in there, which is great. So for us now, we might even be able to say, well, let's hook up the wings in this default pose and just see what it looks like, and we might be able to leave it, but it would be good if it... Uh, and then we could, you know, do it as well so that it looks great when it's in its resting position and not have to worry about the animation because it's not actually going to be animated in any way. My plan says, that's a very good point. 
plan said create a, a vehicle, making a plane, work on a high to low pipeline, which is what we're doing, more experience with substance painter, which we're moving into, more experience with marmoset. So actually, and the reference is this picture, which is stylized. So actually it doesn't really go into detail of what kind of style we're going for, which is pretty good. Um, pretty open, I should say. So perhaps that would take some more planning, but I think because I haven't worked on something like this for a while, let's just see. Let's just see how it pans out. Uh, because uh, without a model, I can't do the texturing. And it's not at a stage to, uh, you know, we can bait things off and get it working and, you know, test stuff out. Uh, we can only really do that once the model is complete. So yeah, lack of planning wins finally, to an extent. Uh, right, okay, so how does this look in position? What's going on where? Okay, so these come out. So perhaps we need some kind of rail system. Yeah, come out and slot there. So I'm going to take this position and this position. This is the route it goes down. So maybe we start at a central thing and come out. Now what's going to be the best way of doing this? Maybe a polygon in each? That makes sense actually. So let's go to topology, let's go in here, pen tool, Bridge this. And then let's get rid of that's those two. And then slide these.
maybe we make these slightly thinner, is that going to do it? And then while we're here, some kind of indicator how it slides out. Bits. Like so maybe dump all this. Okay. Cool. And then what we can do now we can paste this and bring it in. Shut up a bit more. So I realise there's not very much talking right now. That's because I'm concentrating <laughs> or rather thinking. Maybe 
maybe if we attach something like this. Maybe it just needs some kind of groove thing. gives us a bit of space for the wings as well, so we'll put those in next. First, good idea to extend this. So in here, if we bridge and make a gap. Oops.
detail, which is nice. Okay, so there, there, and then when they're away, they're over there. So it could be that we just keep them in. We just move the. And that is going to be the best situation if we just in the rest in position. Just move the wheels so that they're away from the wing element, and we should be fine. Uh, so, first of all, let's do that. Get this again. The positions of them. Move this back here. Just key them on again. So it just moves left and right, that's fine. Uh, and then let's just delete these, uh, duplicate this. Good. And then these ones, uh, in fact, we'll just take this. Put this between them. intersect with classic themselves need to become smaller. Covers on these as well to again make it a bit more aerodynamic looking. Uh, 
Well, looks like we're not doing any read apology tonight, if it's 20 to 10 already. But at least we can, you know, finish this block out and on Thursday just crack on with read apology and just try and blast through that as much as possible. Right, if we have a look at the calendar. So we've got the end of this month. When does this say? So by the 12th. That's when we want it done. So maybe this weekend I might do a, a stream uh, just to kind of help it out a bit. Because right now I think we're going to hit, it's going to take a bit over a month, I think. I think if I give myself until the end of April, we'll finish it. Which would help actually because then we can do a proper job on retopology get a really nice high and bake it and then have you know maybe four maybe five streams doing texturing in Substance Painter which would be great <sighs> time, yes time flies, get it flying Flying when you're having fun. Yeah, I saw the joke. Okay, so in here. This is where we need to start labeling things. So. Maybe just to help this out a bit. Uniform. Ooh. Dad joke for the win. I'm all about those dad jokes. Something. 
him in here to make him look a bit cooler. Yeah, okay. So it's sort of, you know, something's in place. The wings don't move now, which is good. They somehow magically rotate around, you know, that thing, this contraption. Perhaps there's some kind of disc in the middle, which helps with that. They stay in the same position, yeah, they just rotate. Oh wait, it's not the end of the world if they didn't rotate though, if I'm honest. So what if we put this like this? Got those bases. Uh, got the graph editor again. And then just in the rotation, what if we just killed that rotation? Silhouette is not as interesting, but sod it, we'll leave it for the moment. And the wheels need axes as well, so that these would be dead on. Like so. space for it.
To be honest, do we have the uh, the wheels rotating from the same point as well? Then that's going to be pretty good. Oh, did I shut that thing? Position. Just delete them. Also, the rock. I think the ground. Oh no. Oh no, it's the ground. Yes, yeah, so it needs to be lower. So, what if we delete these ones and these ones? How's that look? Okay, and I think the ground's still gonna, yeah, so it needs to sit somewhere between, between those. So it's still quite close to the ground. I suppose basically, basically don't think about it too hard because uh, the wings wouldn't be able to fall back into place. So actually, let's just go back. Hope that part of undo is. Thank you. 
so this is deleted. Duplicate. Cool. Some extra detail. Uh, e O A but A E E O bet E bet A bet uh, Do you drop in centimeters to bring to Unreal? Don't know. Uh, I would say just import it and see what it comes out as. And um, A, -A but I, I I don't know how I'm, uh, I'm improvising on your your username. Um, I use Modo because uh, that's what I used to use in my previous studio, so I'm really used to using it now. Um, but I also use it because it's the modeling in it is far more intuitive than in any other package that I've used. So um, yeah, I just find it much easier to work with than other things. Uh, I find uh, I've never used Max. Um, I use Maya at work and I find it super clunky. Um, if you're looking for a new uh, video, oh, video, uh, if you want to, you know, learn, some, have a go at this software and kind of learn it, then I did a um, quick start, which I'm still yet to put up, but if you um, join our Discord, then it'll be notified in there if you want to, you know, uh, learn it. Um, oh, well, these are going mental again. All right, I think it's, uh, it's not in channels. It's, this is another one. Can't be it. Um, yeah, um, and so basically, I use it because it's the most familiar for me, but also out of the box it, it works really well you don't have to do uh, you know lots of faffing around in order to get it working
Um, what do you use, Eobet? Um, you know, are you in the market to learn something else, or um, you know, do you are you a long time Maya or Max user? Sticking to your guns on them. So we've got some kind of aerodynamic paneling, which you know might help with the way it looks as well. Really, maybe the wheel shapes isn't aren't good. They're totally solid, which might not be helping. But I do think it looks better with some sort of aerodynamic dynamic plating underneath. And you know when this is. To this a little bit now. So when you're when it's flying you can see there's some rubber rubber tires tucked in there which is which would be pretty cool. But yeah, there's enough going on in there that I'm happy with contraptions which is cool um, I'm a cad guy okay I've never used blender so um, I don't I've, I've only seen it and it seems even more kind of um, intuitive than modo but yeah I totally agree you know, uh, dropping money on something that you're not going to be using that much. I bought a license for this. Um, when did I buy it? Maybe three years ago now? Perhaps. Maybe two years ago. 
I can't remember, but it was before they did the subscription service, um, and it was quite expensive at the time, so I'm kind of like reluctant to move on to the latest um, uh, software. This is version 10, not a version, version 11. Um, yeah, totally get where you're coming from. Um, but yeah, I mean, once I get this YouTube video up, which I was saying before you came to the stream, that will be uh, either this weekend, moving into next week, um, and I'm going to put up some PDFs and cheat sheets and stuff like that. Uh, so if you're ever interested, you can download the trial and, um, you know, at least it's kind of a quick start thing to get you going and get it up to speed um, and that kind of thing. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people in, in who watch this stream um, have asked for a quick start, so I eventually pulled my finger out and made one in February. Just need to edit it all together. Um, get it online. Oh, does it? Which I feel as if I should support out of principle since everyone else moved on to subs. Um, I didn't know that they still offered a, a permanent license. I might email them about that then and see if I can move my license onto, still keep it as a non-subscription, but move, upgrade to the next version because I feel like it's going to be, I mean, hence subscription service, um, it's more expensive in the long run. <laughs> I'd rather just pay my dues and that be it. Um, right, and then the last thing we we're going to do tonight in a whole 20 minutes, we need to power. Jesus, right. Right, so some kind of panel in with dials and some things at the side. So let's crack on with this. Let's save a new version. So uh, 
Hey Yvette, um, how did you find the stream? Did you, were you just Googling? Um, or, or just kind of stumbling on Twitch? Or did you see it through Twitter or, or anything like that? Just interesting to know kind of where I'm reaching. Joystick. Browsing creative and noticing the interface. Brill, cool. I think I'm gonna fill up the um the right side. side of the interface with stuff at some point. Um, you know what, I have no idea about the SolidWorks um, connections, mainly because uh, a bit like you, kind of, we're both at opposite ends of the scale. Hmm, got some stuff poking through. Um, yeah, because I don't really use SolidWorks or anything other than um, uh, I just use kind of the 3D-esque programs and that's about it.
Um, yeah, I have a great uh, rest of the week. Hard, hard maniac. I'll, um, yeah, I'll be back on Thursday. So yeah, I'll see you then. Um, yeah, uh, well, you bet if you um, follow, if you follow me on Twitch and you go onto the Discord, um, I'll be shouting out in my streams, but also the di- well in the Discord. I'll, I generally notify when I post stuff, new stuff. So, um, yeah, I will. You'll find out through that. Um, and Veneno, um, any idea of the poly count? Yes. Yeah, so our poly count is sitting currently at. Uh, let's have a look. Let's move this out of the way. Polygons. Vertex. Oh, right, I'm going to have to select everything. Hold on. Okay, so VNNO or I don't know how to say your name, if I'm honest. Uh, okay, so that's everything selected that's visible. Yeah. And that's sitting currently on uh, six thousand, six and a half thousand. And then I would say that there's some mirrors going on as well. So maybe it's sat on around 8,000 polygons at the moment, I would say. Something like that. Um, maybe a bit more, maybe 9,000, actually. I don't know. Between 8 and 9, I would have thought. So we, yeah, so it's on six. Six and a half thousand. So maybe it's sat on about nine thousand because you know these meshes, all the pink bits are um, instants; they're mirrored. And you can see better in the orthographic. Um, so it hasn't taken into account uh, those. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is only um, a very basic rough out block out um, for the last. Shit, how many? Three streams? Nine hours? So this will be the 12th, up to 12 hours now on just the block out and getting everything working as it should to try and, you know, match up to this image. Um, if you go on Discord, um, I'm not sure if you came up in, if you were here in time to see it. Let's see if this gets, will it come up? Yeah, so if you go there and you go to the stream progress, you can see where I started and where I am up to and I publish something every time I finish streaming just because it's good to keep a um, kind of like a whip, a work in progress that I can see and others can see too um, but yeah we're just kind of finishing touches really on this on this bit now um, so that on Thursday we can start retopologizing the thing uh, show people some new how the retopology works in Modo, which would be pretty cool. Um, but also, it means that I can crack on knowing that the block out is, you know, at a pretty good standard. And then we spend less time in the next stage faffing with how it should be looking and what, what kind of, um, you know, still playing about with dimensions and stuff like that. Just get rid of that scale, dude. Just get these pedals in a bit better. Before I end the stream, well, maybe once I, uh, after I end.
the screen stream because it might be a bit boring to watch and I'm going to just organize the scene a bit better because there's meshes all over the shop at the moment. you've been here before when you made the landscape oh right nice just normally looking fair enough look away um, oh, sorry about that uh, yeah brilliant um, well I'm soon again set a similar kind of thing I just need time to finish it off but I wrote a blog post on um, you know, how much time I actually wasted on that landscape, doing that landscape. Um, and so I just really wanted to post up right out, uh, kind of looking back, a bit of a post-mortem on, yeah, how things could have gone a bit better for me if I'd planned a bit more and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, yeah, keep your eyes out for that as well, which again, I will post in due course. Uh, it's quite, it looks... I need that offset a little bit. Let's offset them. So is that something for your portfolio or pay job? No, this is portfolio stuff. Um, so I wanted to do a quick project um, that hopefully wouldn't take that long to create. Um, and I wanted to, you know, I saw this concept and thought that would be really cool to make. So that's literally what my thought process was for this piece. Are you working on anything in particular at the moment or having a breather between projects? Uh oh, did it work? No, I think it's under portfolio. I will do a, you know what, I might just update the ArtStation one so it does that as well. Oh man, I've just cleaned this. in there. 
really? And to be honest, I mean, the cockpit doesn't need that much in it, really. What's going on in here? So that's that area. Um, We're not going to be the camera. Well, I mean, we'll see how we go, but I doubt the camera's going to be, you know, all the way in here. I mean, it could be. Might be a nice detail shot, but right now, that's that's fine. Working on a game, just making models at the moment. No, uh, descriptions on art station, super nice. Thank you. Um, I think I think it's good to have some kind of a description to what you're aiming for, just not a life story, because so many are just kind of like go on and on and on, and you just think, chill out, dude. <laughs> Can't even remember what it says now. Uh... Yeah, yeah, basically saying what I wanted to do. Even looking at it now, just thinking, yeah, change that, change that, change that. <laughs> Right, I think I'm going to leave it there for tonight. I'm really happy with, you know, the stream and, you know, how the model turned out. Um, I think it was cool just, you know, working on this undercarriage bit and just getting something in here so it looks like something's going on. In fact, while we're here, just quickly, Good to just maybe mix up the colors so the paint shape now and I think just even having these red bits underneath help with kind of the elongatedness of it which is cool uh, right okay cool um, so uh, for anyone who's new or what have you I'll be back on Thursday uh, same time again half seven till half ten um, yeah, have a good couple of days. Uh, keep an eye on the Discord and I'll see you hopefully Thursday. Um, yeah, have a good couple of days. See you then. Short and sweet goodbye. <laughs> Makes a change. <laughs>